Good morning and welcome to our today's lesson. I'm Mr. Amaya Kevin, I'm going to take you through biology, IG year 10. And today we are starting with the topic of reproduction in humans. Reproduction in humans, this one 27, 2018, 2020. So reproduction in humans. So, reproduction in humans, when you were in year 9, you remember we talked about the characteristics of living things or uh, life processes in living organism. And number one was uh, reproduction. So, we go straight to the definition of reproduction and is the process by which mature individuals produce viable offspring. So, definition of reproduction. Definition of reproduction. Definition is the process by which mature organism reproduce viable offsprings. So Another name of viable offspring is the fertile offsprings. And we are saying that uh, the process by which mature, the process by which mature organism, that means that only mature organisms that are able to produce viable or fertile offspring. When you talk about uh, viable offspring, it means that uh, the organism must belong to the same species. That means if they are human beings, they belong to the Homo sapiens sapiens. That means that a uh, human being when, mates, when he mates with another human being, that means that you are going to produce what? A viable offspring. But when organism of different species mate, they cannot produce a viable offspring. They are going to produce a, an offspring that is what? Infertile, that cannot produce a viable offspring. So we, reproduction only takes place when the organisms are mature. Because when organisms are mature, they are able to produce mature spermatozoa. So, mature organism mature organisms produces mature gametes. Mature gametes. And examples of gametes you have sperms in males and ovum in female. So, the gametes are two sperms and ovum. So, organism must be mature for, for it to produce what? Mature spermatozoa or mature gametes. Then you have two types of reproduction. Types of reproduction. Types of reproduction. Types of reproduction. So we have two types of reproduction. Number one, we have sexual reproduction, and number two, asexual reproduction. So types of reproduction, there are two. They are two. There are two types of reproduction. Number one, we have sexual. Sexual reproduction. And number two, we have asexual. A sexual reproduction. So we want to break them down to see the differences between sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. So the two types of reproduction are sexual and asexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, in sexual, talk about sexual. In sexual reproduction, In sexual reproduction, there is production of gametes. So in sexual reproduction, we're being told, specialized sex cells called gametes are produced. Specialized sex cells called gametes are produced. There are two. So number one, we have 
sperms, and number two, you have what? Ovum. So, undersexual, specialized, specialized, you have been told specialized sex cells. Are, are produced. Sex, specialized sex cells are produced and are called gametes. And are called gametes. So in sexual production, we have gametes being produced. And these gametes are two. They are actually two. So, they are two. Number one, we have mobile male gametes. Mobile male gametes. Mobile male gametes. The name of the mobile male gametes are called sperm. Sperm. And number two, we have stationary female gamete. Stationary female gamete. It's called ovum. Specialized stationary female gametes are called ovum. So, get the difference. We've been told there are two types of gametes. Number one, we have mobile male gametes. Mobile male gametes, that means that they move from one point to another. That means that the sperm swims towards the what? The ovum. And stationary female gametes. That means that they are not moving. They are at a specific point where the sperm has to swim to reach them for fertilization to do what? To take place. So the types of gametes are two, male gametes which are mobile. Mobile means that they are able to move from one region to another. And number two, stationary female gametes are called what? Ovum is also called egg cell. The sperm must move to the ovum to fuse with it. I've been told the sperm, the sperm must move to the ovum to fuse with it. The sperm must move to the ovum to fuse with it. And this process is called fertilization. This process is called fertilization. It's called fertilization. So in exam, if you ask define the following terms, fertilization. You say it's the process by which male gamete sperm fuses with female gamete ovum to form a zygote. So the fusion of male gamete and female gamete, the process is called what? Fertilization. We say that the egg, it is fertilized. So the sperm has to move towards the egg, that is ovum, and digest the wall of the egg and enter the nuclear of the sperm enters into the ovum and fuses with the nuclear of an egg cell and the zygote is formed. That's all that process whereby the nuclear cell of a male and the nuclear of a female fusing together is called it what? Fertil fertilization. The single cell formed after fertilization is called zygote. The single cell the single cell formed after fertilization is called zygote. The single cell formed after fertilization, it is called zygote. So immediately when the fertilization takes place, the zygote is being to be formed. So when male gamete fuses with female gamete, the resultant, we are going to form what? An egg cell. And that, uh, the resultant will be, sorry, the resultant will be what? An a zygote. So the fusion of male gamete and female gamete, they fuse to form what? A zygote. Then this zygote will develop 
into new individual. Living cell. This cell divides many times by mitosis to form all the cells of the new animals. These cells divide many times by mitosis to form all the cells of the new individual. So the zygote, here being told the zygote, will divide many times by mitosis. Will divide by mitosis to form I've been told they divide many times by mitosis to form all new cells of an animal. To form all new cells of new organisms, new animal. So when you talk about mitosis, mitosis is a type of cell division and there are two. We have mitosis and meiosis. And when you talk about cell division, it's the increase in number of cells or the replication of the, uh, the cell. That's whereby one cell is dividing to give us two cells or two cells dividing to give us four cells. That is mean by what? Cell division. And at the cell division, there are virtually two. We have mitosis and meiosis. So mitosis takes place in the somatic cells. That's why I've been told that the zygote, which is a cell, is going to divide by what? Mitosis to form the all new cells of an animal. When you talk about the cells of an animal, there are so many types of uh, cells found within the animals. For an example, in human being, we, ha we have sperm cells that we say that are responsible for fertilization. We have uh, intestinal cells. We have kidney cells. We have liver cells. We have red blood cells. We have brain cells. We have muscle cells. So those all cells are going, the zygote will divide by mitosis to make sure that all cells found in the human being or any living organism are there. So, in a sexual reproduction, but in a sexual, in a sexual, there is no fusion of male and female gametes. So there is no specialized gamete and there is no fertilization. We are being told, there is no production or fusion of male and female gametes. Instead, cell I've been told, in a sexual reproduction, there is no specialized gamete and there is no fertilization. There is no fertilization. As you can see in a sexual, we have specialized gametes, like in, a, in female ovum and male sperm. But here, there is nothing like that. There is no production of fusion of male. There is no production of gametes. Production of gametes. There is no production of gametes. or fertilization or fertilization so you're being told that uh, in a sexual instead the cell instead the cell in one part of the body divides by mitosis to form a structure that breaks away from the parent body instead cell in one part Instead, cell in one part of the body, in one part of the body, divides by mitosis divides by mitosis to form a structure that breaks away, to form a structure that breaks to form a structure that breaks away from the parent body. From the, from the parent, from the parent body. And grows into new organism. And grows into 
new organism. So in a sexual reproduction, that's one cell that divides by mitosis to form a structure that breaks away from the parent body and grows into what? New organism. E.g. organism that reproduce Organ examples of the organism that we produce this way, e.g., so we have example of organism that reproduce asexually are hydra, which are produced by burning, are hydra. which we produce by budding. We talk about budding, if I can just uh, sketch or demonstrate. This is uh, a parent cell whereby you just see on the part of the body of the cell, we are going to have what? Another cell dividing here. Then at the end of the day, this cell is going to do what? To break. So we are going to have what? Two different Cell. This is the parent, and this is what? The divided what? Cell. So this is the what? The offspring. This is the offspring. And if you can see, off, if you can see, the offspring resulted from what? The parent cell. So one cell, the part of the body just divides and it breaks off from the parent cell to form what? A new organism. That's what we call by what? A sexual reproduction. Completely, there is no what? Fission of male and female gametes. So, we want to discuss the types of reproduction in details. We said there are two, sexual and asexual. And we are starting with what? Sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction sexual reproduction. There are two types of reproduction, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. I said sexual, there's production of gametes. And the gametes fuses, both uh, male gamete and female gamete fuses together to form what? A zygote. And a zygote divides through the process of mitosis and forms all the new cells found in what? In an organism. So we go straight away to asexual reproduction. Asexual repro reproduction. Asexual reproduction. In an asexual, we are, we are being told individual produces as individual produced asexually from the same adult organism are called clones. O individuals that are produced asexually from the adult parents are called what? Clones. They are exactly, they have exactly same genes. That means that uh, the genes that are found on the parents are the genes that are found on the, on the offspring. So for an example, if the parent, we have one parent and the parent gave out two, ki two offspring, that means that the genes that are in these two kids are the same genes that are found on the what? The parent cells. So under that you say, individual produce asexually, individuals produced asexually individual produced asexually from the same adult from the same adult from the same adult are called clones are called clones. We want to see the reason, I want to know the reason why they are called clones. Because they have exact genes. They have, because they have exact same genes from the parent from the parent organisms. So, organisms that are produced asexually, they have their genes, 
there's no variation. The variation means that there's differences between one organism and the other organism. For an example, in a sexual, there's variation whereby your father might be tall and give birth to a kid who is what? Short. Or the father might be dark-skinned and he gives birth to a kid who is what? Light-skinned. That's what we mean by what? Variation. But in asexual reproduction, there's no variation because the genes composed in the parent cells are the same genes that are found in what? In the offspring. When cells divide by mitosis, I've been told when the cells divide by mitosis, when the cell divide by, by, by mitosis, new cells that are produced are exact copies. Comma, new cells that are produced new cells that are produced I've been told when cells divide by mitosis, new cells that are produced are exact copies from original cells. Are exact copies from original, original cells. So, as you can see, if the cells, we're being told when the cells divide by mitosis, the new cells that are produced are exact copies from the original cells. If we can use a demonstration, so this is the parent cell. And this parent cell is going to divide my mitosis, whereby if here we have a nucleus, it will divide into two. The cell is going to divide into two. After dividing into two, this one cell is going to give us how many cells? It's going to give us two cells. So these two cells, whatever it is here, and whatever it's here, it's exact copies that are found in what? In the parent? From the parent cell. So when this cell divides, it's going to give us what? Two, we are going to have two cells. So this one, cell A, so cell A and cell B, they have what? The same genes. So the genes that are composed in A are the same genes that are composed in what? In B. That's why we say it. in a sexual reproduction, there is no what? In a sexual production, there's no variation. All organisms look alike. All organisms look alike. And they have what? Same genes. Next point. All cells of an organism that produce asexually have the same genes as the cell that produces them. That is what? Original adult cells. So this is the original adult cells. And it's going to divide mitotically or through the process of mitosis to produce the viable offspring, that the, this offspring, they have the same, same genes that are found in what? In the parent cells. A sexual reprodu reproduction, a sexual reproduction is, uh, is vital or is important to those organisms that are found in a stable environment. A sexual reproduction is useful or is good to those organisms that are found in stable environment. So you say when, when organisms are produced in, are produced asexually, when organisms are produced asexually in a stable environment, When organisms are produced asexually in a stable environment, that means that means that they will adapt. They will adapt to the environment. They will adapt to the environment and also and they will also produce, they will also produce individuals that are well, the 
that are well adapted to the same environment. To the same, to the same environment. That means that uh, if you are being born in a tropical area, you are going to be born in that area, then we adapt to the to the environmental condition of the tropical area. Then if you give birth, you're also give, going to give birth to a kid or to an offspring that is also well adapted to the same condition. If you're being born to area where it's uh, prone to malaria and you adapt well so that uh, you can survive in those areas, even the kid that you're going to give birth you will be able to do what? To survive in such areas. If you're being born in an area that is too hot, the kids that are also going to be born and you adapt to those areas and then your body adapt to the changes of those environmental surroundings that you are, the kids that are also going to give birth are also going to do what? To adapt and survive in the same area. That's what we call survival for the fittest. But also, you see, when organisms are produced asexually in a stable environment, they will adapt to the environment and they will also produce individuals that are well adapted to the same environment. So if you are parent adapted to stay in Nairobi, where for an example in Nairobi it's a, it's a epidemic to, for malaria and cholera and they were able to survive and adapted to the environment. That means that even you, if you are born in such area, you're also going to do what? To adapt to the changes of environment and will be able to do or to produce viable offspring. We also have vice versa. What about if the parents were unable to, uh, to adapt to the changes of environment of a certain area? What's going to happen is that uh, the kid that is going to be born will not be able to also to do what? To adapt to those changes of uh, environment and definitely they will die. So, under that we say, when the organism is not well adapted to the stable environment is not adapted well to the stable environment what is going to happen is that uh, it will also produce the offspring that is not well adapted to the same environment. And definitely the organism B will die, it will extinct, because it will die. But the organism A, that is well adapted to the same environment, will survive. This one is going to die. And all this we say that is what? It is survival for the fittest. When we talk about survival for the fittest is that this organism was able to survive in harsh environmental condition. But this one was unable to survive in harsh environmental condition. So this one will die, and this one will do what? Will survive and we call it survival for the fittest. You either adapt or you die. So that's what we talk about, uh, about uh, the asexual reproduction. And also, we are being told, all cells of the organism that are produced asexually have the same genes. All cells that are produced asexually have the same genes have the same genes and what is a gene i said that all cells that uh, are produced asexually. When I talk about asexual, it means that through asexual reproduction. The cells that are produced when there is no what? Fusion of male and female gametes. Those are the cells that I'm talking about. They're being told, when they produce asexually, 
It means that all the cells, for example, we have five cells here, cell A, B, C, D, and E. All of these cells are going to have what? The same genes. Are going to have the same genes. So at the end of the day, you will not be able to distinguish the two, the five cells. All of them are what? Similar in structure and morphology. So, what is a gene? A gene is a section of DNA. What is a gene? So you'll be asking an example, what is a gene? You say, a gene is a section of DNA. A gene is a section of DNA that determines a particular that determines a particular is a section of DNA that determines a particular characteristics or future. A particular character characteristics of a person. Of a person. A particular characteristics of a person. So the genes that are able to tell us your behavior. Genes are the ones that determine the behavior of a person. Or the genes that they were able to determine what the characteristics of what? Of a person. Genes are found in the nucleus of a cell on the chromosome. Genes are found in the nucleus of on a chromosome, on cro on a chromosome. So here we have our cell, and inside the cell we have a cell organelle called nucleus. So inside the nuclear here is where you have what genes, and I've been told that the genes are found on what a cro on a chromosome. I'll repeat. We're being told genes are found on the nucleus of a cell on the what? Chromosome. So inside the nucleus you have what? Genes. And these genes are found on what? On a, a chromosome. A chromosome is a thread-like structure. Something that looks like this. So this is what? The structure of a chromosome. So at the center it's called what? Centromia. Centromia. And these ones are called chromatids. Are called chromatids. So you can see this is the chromosome. So this chromosome is the one that carries what? Genes. And what are the functions of genes? Are the things that determine the character of a person. Uh, for an example, the genes that you inherited from your parents. Are you told in your family, between your mother and the father, who is tall? So if you are tall, your mother is tall and your dad is short, that means that you took the genes for the mother. If you are light skin, your father is light skin and your mother is dark skin and you are light skin, that means that you took the genes from what? Of your father. Those what you call by what? Genes. Another thing that also disturbs the students is that uh, we talk about the we talk about the structure. You say that I'm fat and he's thin. You know, for you to be fat or thin. That can be determined by also environmental changes. You cannot say that fat is being determined by what? Genes being fat or being thin. Because uh, those ones can be determined by what? Environmental change or what you eat or the activities that you do. You take the activities that you do what? You do in a daily basis. For an example, if you're going to gym, do working out, you're going to have what? You're going to have biceps and triceps that are huge, you're going to be, your body is going to change in morphology and what? Structure. So if your body change, the structure of the body changes, it doesn't mean that if you're going to give birth to a kid, it's also going to be a body builder. No. That's what the environment that changes the structure of the person. Number two, for an example, if you are dark and you bleach your skin to light skin, that means that the kid that you're going to give birth to, will not be what? Will not be 
light skin will be dark skin because those are the environmental things that we change on the body surface. Those are, we call it physical phenotype, something that you see from the outside cannot alter the genetic composition. So genes determines things like uh, skin color, uh, skin color, tall, dwarfness, are also other some characteristics. Another point you have been told, another point, so up to that point, you say that uh, we have discussed what is a gene, what is a chromosome, and also what is DNA. DNA is, uh, in full, it's called dioribonucleic acid. Dioribonucleic acid. And it's the one that is composed or not on the genes. That's why if you want to determine if you are having the same genes from your father, you go and do something called DNA in the hospital. It's under genetic engineering. Do DNA to determine if you are having the same genes that are found in your father. We call it dioribonucleic acid. So state how you go to sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction. Sexual repro sexual reproduction. So up to this point before I start on a sexual reproduction, a sexual, the things that you need to know in a sexual that the organisms that are produced through a sexual reproduction are clones. And I said clones means they have the same genes, they have the exact gene co composition or they have the same genetic composition. Number two, in a sexual reproduction, there is no variation. When we talk about there is no variation, it's that all organisms look alike. All organisms look alike. And number three, the environment can alter or can determine the survival of what an organism, whereby if organism is being born in that environment and it's well adapted to that environment, that means that it's going to do what? To produce also the offspring that are well adapted in that environment. And the, those organisms that are well adapted in the environment will also produce another organism that are all well adapted to the same environment. But if the organism is not well adapted to the same environment, definitely the organisms that are going to be born are also not going to be well adapted to the same environment and they will die. And we call it survival for the fittest. Survival for the fittest. So we go to sexual reproduction sexual reproduction. And as earlier stated, I said that uh, here, there is production of what? Gametes. In sexual reproduction, there is production of gametes. And we said we have two types of gametes. We have mobile gametes and stationary gametes. Mobile gametes, we say they are what? Male gametes called sperms. And stationary gametes are female gametes called ovum. So, they produce they produce offspring that show genetic variation. They produce offsprings that show genetic they produce organisms that show genetic variation. When you talk about genetic variation, in a family of six, you are six in your family, three are light skin, three are dark skin, three are tall, three are short. That's variation. There is what? Differences. Because we have this from the same mother and same father, but the offspring are what? Different. Why are they different? Others are tall, others are what? Short. Others are light skin, others are dark skin. That's what you talk about, what? Genetic, what? Variation. That means there's a mix-up of the genes. So others took the mother's genes, another took so what? the father's genes. And it can also be a point whereby all the parents are what? Dark-skinned. But the offspring are, some of the offspring are what? Light screen. This variation comes from the, also the grandparents. You check on the grandparents, you found out that either the grandmother or the grandfather, one of them was what? Brown skin. So the genes was passed from the, the grandmother to your father and it became what? Recessive. It was not dominant. So your father had a genes for light skin, but it was, was what? Dominant or recessive. So it was not portrayed on him. So your father was a carrier. We call it heterozygous. 
So when he gave birth to you, that heterozygous form is going to be passed to you. You are also going to be brown skin, the genes that was your father inherited from your grandparents, but it was not portrayed in him. And you are being, we are going to be born or not as a, a light skin. But at the, end of the, at the end of the day, you are also going to produce a kid that is what? Dark skin. Where is the dark skin coming from? The gene that you inherited from your father. We call it heterozygous. But if the parents, if the parents are light skin, all of them are light skin, and they give birth to kids who are old, so all of them are what? Light skin. We call it what? Pure homozygous. Pure homozygous. So we can say it's either heterozygous, or homo, homozygous. So heterozygous is where you have what? Mixed genes, e.g. genes for tallness and genes for dwarfness. But homozygous is where you have what? Pure genes. Either pure genes for tallness or pure genes for shortness or dwarfness. That's what we mean by the term heterozygous and homozygous. So we are on uh, sexual reproduction, and I say in, they show genetic variation. There's differences in what? Offsprings. Number four, there are four key stages in sexual reproduction. There are four, there are four, there are four key stages of sexual reproduction. There are four key stages of sexual reproduction. So we want to know for sexual reproduction to take place, what are the stages that are involved in what? Sexual reproduction. So just take them here. Key stages of sexual reproduction. So which one can you remember before I set mine down? From our from the first from the first explanation when we started reproduction, which one can you remember? We say number one, there's what? Production of what? Gametes. So that's the number one. Gametes are produced. Number one. Sorry, 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 sorry. Gametes are produced. Gametes are produced. Which gametes are you talking about? We have female gamete and male gamete. So sperm and ova. Into bracket. Sperm and ova. So these are the gametes that are being produced. For sexual reproduction to take place, there must be production of what? Gametes. Whereby the man is going to produce male gametes and we say they are what? Mobile. They move from one point to another and are called sperms. And the female are going to produce ova whereby it is stationary that the sperm has to swim towards it to be able to do what for fertilization to take place. Number two, we have male gametes. Number two, stage number two, male gametes. Male gametes, sperm, which is sperm, swims towards female gametes, swims towards female, towards female gametes, that is over. Male gamete has to swim towards the female gametes. So for sexual reproduction to take place, we have four main stages. Number one, I said male gamete has to be produced. Not male gametes, gametes have to be produced. That is, when I talk about gametes in general, we have male and what? Female, sperms and ova. Number two, for, sex, for sexual reproduction to take place, male gametes, which are, which are sperms, has to swim toward the female gametes. So they have to move from one region to another region. That means that from the birth canal into the oviduct to be able to meet what? The female ova and enable to fuse with it. Number two, fertilization must occur. Number three, number three, fertilization, fertilization must occur. 
fertilization must occur. And number four, being told the zygote, the zygote is formed. The zygote is formed. So the four key stages. Gametes are produced, and the examples of gametes we said we have sperm and ova. Sperms for, female, for male and ova for female. Male gametes, that which have sperms, have to swim toward the female gametes, which is what? Ova. Fertilization must occur. I wrote, when the, earlier enough I say I, I define what is fertilization, and I said fertilization is the process by which male gamete, which is sperm, fuses with the female gamete, which is over, to form what? A zygote. And the whole process is called what? Fata fertilization. So it is fertilization, the process by which male gametes fuses with what? Female gametes to form a zygote. And number three, the zygote is formed. So for us to know that uh, reproduction is taking place or the reproduction has taken place, the zygote must be formed. So if the zygote is not formed, that means that uh, the egg was not at the upper part. You see, fertilization only takes place when the egg is at the upper part of what? Oviduct. But if it's at the lower part of the oviduct or fallopian tube, there will be no what? Reproduction. And number two, the sperms has to be mature for fertilization to take place. The sperms has to be mature. If the sperms are not mature, fertilization is not going to do what? To take place. So how do you know that your sperms is mature? Number one, we say that we check on the color of the sperm. The, the mature sperms has to be thick and cream in color. Thick and cream in color. So, in exam, you will be asked, name the four key stages of what? Reproduction. Name the four key stages of reproduction. Be smart. Number one is gametes are produced. Number two, male gamete. That is pounds seems toward the female. Number three, fertilization must occur. And then lastly, the zygote is formed. The zygote is formed. So we go to another subtopic called production of gametes. Production of gametes. Production of gametes. Production of gametes. So we want to learn on how gametes are being produced. We want to see how gametes are being produced. And we have two types of gametes. We have female gametes, ovum, and male gametes, sperms. So sperms are produced in male sex organs. Sperms are produced in male sex organ called testes. Called testes. So sperms are produced in the male sex organ called testes. What about ova? Ova are produced in female sex organ. Ova is produced in female sex organ called ovaries called ovaries so male gametes which are sperms are produced by what testes while female ova is produced by what oh ovaries so ovaries so you could say testes and ovaries are reproductive are reproductive organs or gonads so another name of reproductive organs are also called gonads so if you are asked name the two gonads found in human being so female have what? Ovaries, and male have what? Testes. So this one is crystal, but the common one are called what? Organs. So I gave you gonads, so that when it, at times when it comes, you don't get twisted. You know it directly means what? 
the reproductive vote organs. So what are the male gonads, testes? What are the female gonads? Ovaries. Number two point, you say, both are produced when the cell inside the gonads divide. So, what are being produced? This, the gametes. We are being told, both are produced when the cell inside this organ divides by mitosis. Or you just say, gametes are produced when cells inside these organs divide by mitos meiosis. Divide by meiosis. So another point, meiosis produces cells that are not genetically identical. Meiosis produces cells that are not genetically identical. So on explanation, we say that uh, we say gametes are produced when the cells inside these organs divide by what? Meiosis. So remember, we said we have two types of what? Cell reproduction. We talked about mitosis and meiosis. We have mitosis. And we have what? Meiosis. So the differences between mitosis and meiosis is that uh, this one, mitosis takes place in somatic cells. Takes place in somatic cells. It takes place in what? Somatic cells. But meiosis takes place in what? Reproductive organs. It takes place in reproductive organs. That means that uh, they take place in what? Meiosis takes place in what? Ovaries and testes. And mitosis takes place in what? In the inside the cells. So, the in, under the my, my, we say that uh, on uh, sexual reproduction, the cells divide by what? Meiosis. In meiosis, the cell divides twice. So in mitosis here, the one cell is going to give us how many? Two cells. So it's going to divide to give us two cells. But here, it's going to divide to give us, one cell is going to divide twice. Here, one cell is going to divide twice to give us four daughter cells. That's the main differences between meiosis and mitosis. That's the main differences between meiosis and mitosis. And if I can tablet it, the differences between meiosis and mitosis, the differences between meiosis and mitosis is that uh, if I can use a diagram, you say you have future. Here you have mitosis. And here you have meiosis. So under mitosis, number of cell division. Number of cell division. How many number of cell division does mitosis has? It only have one, but meiosis it divides twice. Number two, number of cells formed. Number of cells formed. So in meiosis, the number of cells formed, mitosis are what? Two. But here are four. Then number of chromosomes in cell formed. We go to number of chromosome in the cell in the cells formed in the cells formed so same as original here yeah, being told same as original same as original cell we call it is what 
deployed. But here, half of the number half of the number of original and it said haploid. It is said haploid. It is what? Haploid. This one is diploid and the other one is what? Haploid. Then lastly, type of cell formed. Type of cell type of cell formed. He have body cells. That's why it is interesting. Body cells. But here we have sex cells. Then the last one. We have genetic variation. Genetic variation, none. And here, variable. Genetic variation, none and here, variable. So we have future, we have mitosis and meiosis. That's the, the, the same as differences the, in characteristics. So number of cell division, mitosis, one cell gives another one cell. But in meiosis, one cell gives how many? Two cells. Then number of cells formed. In mitosis, two cells are formed. But here, four cells are being formed. Then you have number of chromosomes in cell formed. So the parent cell has the same as original cell. If the parent cell has 50 cells, also the kid is going to have 50 cells. But here, if the parent had what? In meiosis, if the parent had what? 50 cells, the kid is going to have 25 cells. Now, type of cell formed. Mitosis only produces what? Body cells. And you know the examples of what? Body cells, e.g. muscle cells, brain cells. And here it only produces what? Sex cells. That's why I said this one takes place in somatic cells and this one takes place in what? Reproductive organs. Then genetic variation. In mitosis there's no variation. All organisms look alike. But uh, in meiosis there's a total variation whereby we can be coming from the same organism or from the same parent, but you are what? Different. You don't look alike. So thank you for the to that time. I was um, your teacher, Mr. Omar Kevin, and see you next time. That was biology, yeah, ten.